It was the creative use of water power that turned the Blackstone Valley into a leading economic engine for the new republic. Interconnecting streams and ponds turned into reservoirs by strategically placed dams generated the incredible power that ran the American Industrial Revolution. Yet it was the same source of power that the builders of the Black Zone Canal sought to tap and control as they battled to use the power of water in a new way for transportation. Hi, this is Ranger Chuck Arning with the National Park Service here in the John H. Chafee Blackstone River Valley National Heritage Corridor. It was a constant battle with nature that the engineers of the Blackstone Canal faced as they struggled to use the power of water to their advantage. Now, when we ended part one of our mini-series on uncovering the hidden Blackstone Canal, we were in the village of Albion in Lincoln, Rhode Island. Today, that's where we're starting our stories. We continue to make our way north to Woonsocket in Massachusetts. Now the digging of the Blackstone Canal was no trivial enterprise back in 1824 when it started. Today, trying to find the Blackstone Canal is an equally daunting task. So I tell you what, why don't you join us as we continue to explore and uncover the hidden Blackstone Canal. As we leave the village of Albion, the canal trench is right over here behind me and it eventually enters the river just up ahead. Now, our friends at the library in the Rhode Island Historical Society, Rick Greenwood and Ranger Kevin Gleiberg, are going over the as-built map of uh, the Blackstone Canal, 1828. They're going to tell you just how interesting and unique the canal operation was to the village of Albion. Matter of fact, it's a good time to go up and catch up with them back at the library. And while they're pouring over that map, take a good look at the size of the pages. They're about two feet long each page. That's a big map. When we continue our way up north here, uh, and it's about a mile and a quarter or so up here to Albion, our next village, uh, we have another situation where, uh, again, we have a stretch of canal trench uh, constructed after a mill was already in operation there. Now we can see our familiar uh, lift lock notations here, but then we were noticing these two notations here and here. Um, and what, what's our best guess as to what's going on here, Rick? With right. I, you know, I think, Kevin, what we're seeing here is something similar to what we've, we've speculated down at the Kelly factory. Uh, this is the head race for the Albion factory and that just like the canal they want the water to stay at a certain level there but then to fall inside the factory over the water wheels mm -hmm. and exit down below. Now there's a lock right here and everywhere else we've seen these raceways in the canal separated because the level in the canal is affected by each each lock emptying that occurs. Mm. To prevent those lock emptyings from dropping the water just as it's about to fall over the Albion factory. I think we're seeing another guard lock here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Looks like another one here. Another one up there. And of course, this, th this mill predated the canal by about uh, 10, about, 15 years. That's ago. right, yeah. yeah. So it, one of the difficulties they have to deal with here is the fact that it's already already there. We can that's see the, right. And the dam across the river and, and a bridge uh, leading to uh, over to Cumberland. That's right, and, and a bridge, the, the lovely uh, Iron Albion bridges are still in that location today. Another great spot where, where we see, uh, of course, the Albion factory is much bigger. It takes up a good bit of this length of the right. canal, but uh, the, the history can be quite clearly read in this location. Right. 
Well, we've we've reached the village of Manville, or Mansville, as it's still listed right. on, on, on this map. Um, and a couple things going on here. First of all, uh, this is the first village we've come to where uh, there's some uh, delineation of the housing uh, uh, being shown on the map. Because we have the housing here on what's then the Smithfield side of the river, and then, of course, the mill itself over on the, uh, the Cumberland side. Um, and then the fact we have three three lockings here, so obviously a pretty substantial dam here. Right, which, which you can still see today, quite, uh, quite uh, a sight to see, particularly in, in uh, the springtime when the water is really running. But you're right, three locks in pretty quick succession, and a very typical layout for a, for a little mill village with the houses on a single road and facing each other. Um, not a lot of detail there, but some of those houses are still present, and yep. so well worth a visit. And then here again, a, they had to build a bridge over the canal so they could get to the bridge over the river. Interesting here, they've penciled in a little, looks like a spillway of some kind, mm. perhaps, on the canal. Yeah. Um, this may have been an area that, that had a lot of water in it, um, particularly when the, the locks were closed uh, and the water couldn't flow. It might have meant that the water, they needed to dump the water in. And of course, they probably were urged by Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Mann to put the water back in on the upstream side of the dam. Right, because obviously, again, the, the, this is a case where the, uh, the mill is, is opposite not just to the canal, but to the mill village, which is a little peculiar. Um, you don't see that too often where the housing and the, 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 the mill are separated. And we can see, uh, just as we work our way north, there's James and here's David Wilkinson. Uh, again, the, the, that connection. And, and then that right at the edge here, we can barely make out Crookfall Brook, um, where, where David Wilkinson uh, has his property right here. What, what's going on here? Why, right. What's David doing over here? Well, that's just, just to be clear here, that's, that's a cousin of our David Wilkinson down in Pawtucket. But he, too, is involved in manufacturing right up the, the Crookfall Brook, a uh, little river, there was a, another cotton factory. That has nothing to do with what uh, the canal company had to deal with here, because this is all just going to flow into the Blackstone. Well, we, there is a, a nice little bridge here again, uh, uh, again to get across the brook. Uh, right. And, and I, I assume a, a spillway uh, of some sort to get that water into, the, or a culvert, something here. Of, uh, yeah, what, what the canal records show is that they actually built an aqueduct, yeah. that they carried the canal over Crookfall Brook, but they did it in such a way that the brook would flow in uh, when its waters were high enough, so they could gain some additional water so in the canal. fairly low <laughs> right. aqueduct, almost more like a floating bridge in that, that respect. There. Right. Unfortunately, the railroad came through, and there's, there's no evidence no, of what was no, there. It, it is an interesting question, exactly what that would have looked like. Um, and it is one of just a few aqueducts that were built uh, to carry the canal across other bodies of water. is in the river, in the river, and then uh, right here by uh, this structure. Uh, which right, penciled in. Looks like it's the, uh, the old Hamlet Mill. Right, uh, and of course Stephen Smith was, was in fact manager of the Hamlet Mill for a time, supervised its construction. Uh, the Hamlet Mill was a, basically a creation, a byproduct of, of the canal because it was able to use the canal as a head race. Mm -hmm. And indeed we see there is a, a lock here because there is a drop in the river there. Nobody had yet used that mm -hmm. for manufacturing. And when the canal came along, uh, Mr. Carrington and Mr. Smith saw this as an opportunity to use that higher level that was created here to uh, power a factory. The sort of bow in here that, that's filled in is now known as Hamlet. And of course, the original Hamlet Mill is, has been gone for over 50 years. And in its place, taking the name of Hamlet, are the very large so-called French or Belgian mills mm -hmm. um, that are, are located in this area and all the housing that was built for them. So this is a case where the name has outlasted the village mm -hmm. and factory that, that originally uh, brought it into being. With the wonderful, famous French mills behind us here in Woonsocket, Rhode Island, we're looking for the final traces of the Blackstone Canal. 
And as you can see here, I'm on top of a levee that was built by the Corps of Army Engineers back after the 1955 hurricane that came through Woonsocket and caused a great deal of damage and flooding. With the river here and the mill expansion and the disruption caused by the building of the levees here, all traces of the Blackstone Canal are gone. We think that somewhere between the levee and the road here is where the canal path went through as it made its way through Woonsocket. Now, Woonsocket has a marvelous history of having a lot of water in the downtown area. Of course, you'd never know that today. But to find out how it looked and why, we're going to catch up with Ray Bacon at the Museum of Work and Culture. One of the great things about working in the Blackstone Valley is all the resources from the community we get to work with. Now, we're here today with Ray Bacon at the Museum of Work and Culture because we have some really particular questions to ask about where the Blackstone Canal was when it ran through the city of Woonsocket. And Ray has come up with this wonderful map, 1851, Ray? This is an 1851 Wallings map, and it's become such a useful tool to explain to visitors and to students when I was teaching at the high school uh, where the canal was, where the river was, the properties that were owned, and they're well marked. It's a beautiful uh, teaching tool, and today, of course, we're very happy to have it as a way of showing visitors pretty much the situation in Woonsocket as it existed, well, 150 years ago. And that's pretty amazing because the landscape in the city has changed dramatically over time, hasn't it? Yeah, we think about the river as, as being uh, steady, as remaining the same, but through the years it's changed and it's cost quite a bit. And even de different sections of the city have altered their, their appearance totally, uh, especially with the arrival of floods. I think there was one in 1807, the freshet of 1807, and for for our generation, the flood of 1955 caused by Hurricane Diane was an absolute uh, disaster for the city. And if you looked at the river before the hurricane and look at its flow today, you would find it uh, completely different in certain areas. Today, if you want to uh, find the location of the canal and the river, you would have to be in the area of Hamlet Avenue and across the river would be Cumberland Hill Road. As a matter of fact, you'd be in the area of what is called today Davison Street. It is now just used in back of the old French Wisted Company. And along that river was the old Hamlet Mill along with the, the canal and the, uh, the river itself. That's pretty amazing. You see, it, just, it was really very close to the river along yeah. here, wasn't it? It was designed that way by uh, Edward Carrington when he built the Hamlet Mill. He realized that he had a perfect spot for building mills. Look at all this water, Ray. What's that about? Well, the waters that were used from the Blackstone, by the way, and, and its tributaries, in this case the Peters and, and um, Peters River and Mill River, uh, the water was used, for first of all, for transportation. And in order to better transport goods, the canal was built. So it's really a river canal system. So you see, for example, here in back of the Main Street area, you see the river, and you see what is today Allen Street. Allen Street today is a dead-end street, but that was the root of the canal. That was a canal. And right next to it was what is called the mill pond. Today it's the Truman Bypass. And this was uh, water that was generated over the uh, Lyman Arnold, Arnold Trench. And for many, many years until the building of the bypass, it was a mill pond. So you'd find this today in back of an area like in back of the Woonsocket Call. One of the things, Ray, that the map says to me is just how important water was to Woonsocket. Yeah. Woonsocket's story or the evolution of Woonsocket from mill villages to a city today uh, would not have happened without the river. Without the river in terms of water power, without the river in terms of transportation through the canal system. Uh, every village was next to a, an area that was associated with the Blackstone River. So the, the river is, as we say, the uh, the hardest working river in the United States, and Woonsocket was at the very uh, heart of it as it meandered from Worcester to Providence. Right above the falls is uh, where the, the canal entered uh, Market Square, and uh, the dam, of course, which was there at the time, is not the same one that's there today. Today is flood control uh, dam or the flood control gates, uh, which were installed after the flood of 55, 1955. And as you follow the river, you go upstream to the area of where the canal entered the river again. The vestige here is, would be the, uh, a street called Water Street in the area of Fairmount. This is where the canal was and cut through in creating the, uh, the area called Buffum's Island. 
Some people have often referred to this as the island when the young uh, Woonsocket, Fairmount, and North End people used to play ball. They played right there on what is what was known then as Buffum's Island, but just known as the island. No kidding, no kidding. And then again, once again, up here, it's back in the river for a little bit, isn't it? Back again, it's the river canal system. And if we re-entered the river and went up the area of what is River Street today, as it went up all the way up to North Smithfield, the Waterford area, and Blackstone. Now, the other thing interesting for folks is there actually was, had to be a tow bridge crossing it for the horses to cross over the river. Well, in this section, of course, people still refer to this River Street area as the towpath. Really? Yeah, people today, the old timers, I'm one of those probably <laughs> at this point, but when they say, where, where did you go? We went up near the old towpath. Even though people probably don't remember the towpath, its name has stuck through the years. That's pretty impressive history of the canal, how it still lasts, terminology lasts oh, even sure. today. Sure. And the towpath is still there. So we see W and D Farnham welcoming Darius Farnham. Um, uh, uh, two, again, brothers who had their own uh, mill operation going on in uh, what's then uh, the, right on the border of the town of towns of Smithfield and the town of Blackstone, Massachusetts. We're about to, to cross the line here for the first That's time. That's right. I think the, the engineer is penciled in. Yes, for our own, for our, for our the state line. Here. And uh, we can see, uh, again, uh, the canal, it looks like being used uh, and a little pond that's being that's been added in there, the canal being used as a source of, of power for a mill. Once again, this this uh, creation of a waterway at a high elevation made it possible for manufacturers to tap that and drop it to a lower elevation. Although the factories themselves are also gone, their ruins survive, and it's possible to do a little industrial archaeology and see how that system worked, how water came in at the upper level and then went into this pond and then passed over the water wheels uh, to set the cotton spindle right. spinning. Again, another towpath bridge right. uh, across the river, um, and then a series of three locks um, here in, going into Blackstone. Now today, uh, when you go to uh, Canal Street in Blackstone, Massachusetts, right. uh, the, the canal is no longer there, but we can still see the three little rises uh, in the street where you can stand at the bottom of the, of the street there and look up on your way towards uh, the site of the old Blackstone Manufacturing Company Mills located right here. We can see again the, the river coming in and uh, the power trenches shooting down. Uh, Back into, into the, the river. river. Yeah, and of course the Blackstone Mills were, when they were built, 1809, 1810, were some of the biggest mills in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and the village continued to grow. It, it, it's a good point though, Kevin, that if you go down on Canal Street, just sort of try and imagine that as as a waterway mm. with boats moving by. It's, it's, a, it's a remarkable thing to think about it and uh, it, it would almost seem surreal to see it today, to see right. a boat go sailing down Canal Street right. and yet uh, in 1828 that was the big news. Right. And, and so that's a, that's a case where we have an area where the canal is gone but it's been replaced by a street.
Blackstone Gorge is rugged and foreboding, and for the canal builders of the 1820s, it was a formal enough obstacle to skip. They simply built around it. And today, this part of the canal is easily visible and in pretty good shape. From here, the canal weaves its way in and out of the river as it makes its way north through Millville. Notice how bucolic and pastoral the landscape here in Massachusetts is. It is very deceiving for an industrial valley. The fact of the matter is, most of this land was treeless, pastures and fields. Wood was a valuable resource. It was needed for cooking, heating, building, and it was an important export as well. So the landscape the canal builders were working in has changed considerably since the canal era in 1828. As we make our way up to Millville, we're going to meet Margaret Carroll, local historian, one of our very own volunteers here in the National Heritage Corridor, and one of those people who manages to make things happen here in the Blackstone Valley. Margaret's going to explain to us the landscape of Millville during and after the canal era, and she has some really cool maps to show us too. Now Margaret, before we talk about the canal, let's talk about the changes in the landscape that Millville is famous for. because. There's not a lot of mills you find in Millville anymore, are they? No, they're on. They're what on. happened to them and where are they today? Okay, well, most of the mills are gone. Fortunately, we have the remains of some of these mills as proof of all of what's shown here on the map. But first, let me tell you, as far as orientation, they've changed that. These early maps refer to this as the west bank of the river. And, of course, this would be the east. Today, this is referred to as the south bank and, of course, the North Bank. So this is what creates some problems when people go to old maps and they, they get into the north, south, east, and west of it. But if they're on the site, it's easy to determine because this is the canal right here as it entered the mill pond it created above the dams. This would indicate that the canal went out into the river. That is incorrect. The canal came up from the Millville Lock this way and came right along by the river, right here, and in doing so, it created an island. And that has also been one of the mysteries of the maps. This is the original island. That's where the first grist mill in Milva was built, and that was back in 1732. And we fortunately have the grist mill stone from that mill. This was the first island created by the division of the river. However, when the canal was built, it created a second island, a much larger one. And that's where the greatest complex of mill buildings would be seen. And all of those foundations are right there, as is the remains of the canal. And those are clearly evident. I was hiking there just the other day, and, and it's, it's a wonderful location because you can see some of the real artifacts of Millville's history there, very evident, and, and the river is beautiful there. there. There's no question about it, and that, that portion, of this section right in here, is what we hope someday we will create as a historical site that people will be able to, to walk through and, and see all of that. It's a, it's a beautiful area of Millville, and we have some of the remains of the mills. Uh, the uh, the uh, section of this mill right here, where it sent the water out into the river is still there. You can still see that beautiful stone arch on the Blackstone Riverside. That is a beautiful mm -hmm. arch. That is a beautiful arch. Now let's hold on. Let's grab another map for a second here. If you went farther east down the river, you would come down to the Blackstone Gorge into that wonderful section which we referred to as the High Rocks. That's right in here. And again, the, uh, for industrial purposes, the river d was divided there. This is, a cli and this is 1831. So the river now became out of Blackstone, and this is the dam at the gorge right here, and the river came up this way all the way through as it flows through Millville today. However, the canal had to be built right in here, and this is still in, this is above the, the gorge, and the canal was built right there and parallels the river, if you, see, you can see it really winding through, because as often as possible, they went back into the river instead of digging the canal along the banks of the river. And then you come out, now here we are at the Millville Lock. And the canal crossed, there was an old canal bridge there. You come up the canal, and I, as I showed you on the maps earlier, and this takes us right to this little dot here 
is the first island in Millville. That, this is a wonderful map of the canal in 1831. This is 1854, and again, you can, you can see right down in here, all you have to do is look for the mill buildings in order to find, this is the river where it splits right here, this is the mill pond. In fact, in the, on this map in 1854, it's referred to as a mill pond. I see that. So you must know there was a, it was highly significant. Uh, and then, then the river split, and now here are the, the, uh, the mill buildings on that island created by the canal. This is the canal right here, right here, all the way up. It's shown so clearly. All of this, you can back up to these mill buildings, but all of this in between. Now, if the canal was dug, there had to be a berm and there had to be a towpath. And the towpath in Millville was on this side of the canal. And it came up this way. And all of that is down along the riverbanks that we could create a very, very beautiful uh, historic walk from Central Street down to the Millville Lock. And that's, that's a hope and a plan that will come true someday. Well, let's just put this down for a second and say, so today though, I mean, this map, the canal's already eliminated from the landscape, isn't it? Well, yes, because that was probably almost 50 years after the canal, and, and obviously it had closed, and they didn't feel that it warranted a representation on the map. The danger today is that there still is really good evidence of the canal there, but it's kind of getting filled in by, oh, brush, debris, mm -hmm. neglect, Mother Nature? That's right. It's unfortunate, and that's happened within the past 10 years, because we have taken, uh, we've taken tour walking tours down there, and you can clearly see the brim for the canal, you can see the canal bed, you can see the towpath, all of that is there. It extends all the way from what we would call, say, the Central Street Canal Bridge all the way down. This is the Red Bridge, another very important part of our history, and right down to the lock. And that would, be a, that would be a beautiful canal walk in Millville. And now if we could get people out, if we could first get the people in Millville interested in doing some work with us, then we could eventually make that clearance as many other communities have done it, many others. Millville has the unique, um, in the unique situation, have really, real fine relics of the Blackstone Canal, starting with the lock, ending with an old canal bridge right here, and then all of those wonderful mill buildings which gave Millville its name. Before we leave Millville, a stop at the Millville Lock is an absolute must. The Millville Lock, or Lock 21, was one of 49 locks that made up the canal system, and it is the best preserved of the very few remaining locks here in the valley. The trail down the lock is not only scenic, an easy hike, but also a great little piece of history too. To make things even more exciting, it's right along the proposed bikeway between Providence and Worcester. It really is a wonderful concept to be able to visit some of our more fascinating historical and archaeological treasures right from the comfort of your bicycle seat. Well, this has been Ranger Chuck Arning with the National Park Service here in the John H. Chafee Blackstone River Valley National Heritage Corridor. And we're just a little more than 20 canal miles into our journey from Providence to Worcester. Still got a long way to go. But hey, we still have a lot to talk about. Do you know how many artifacts are along the river here to relate back to the canal era? Well, there's a whole bunch. So I tell you what, until next time, I hope to see you as I uncover the hidden Blackstone Canal.